This is a very fun problem to solve. Well, primarily because it involves colors and you can see it visually. So basically you are given a graph and it has some vertices that are connected. So you need to find an arrangement where you are able to color each of the vertex of the graph such that no two adjacent vertices have the same color. So naturally you can understand that there will be a lot of different solutions, correct? But you have to find out the minimum number of colors. And another interesting part about this problem is that it is an NP hard problem. We'll talk more on that later. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will go over the problem statement and tell you what does it actually mean. Next, we will try to solve this problem using a brute force approach and then see how you can color the graph in different ways. We will cover a greedy approach and then also see why this greedy approach is not optimal all the time. After that, as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us say you have this graph in front of you. And as you can see, it has seven vertices. And some of them are connected to one node, some of them are connected to multiple nodes. The problem statement says that you have to find the minimum number of colors required such that no two adjacent vertices should be of the same color. So if you notice, one method of coloring is very natural. What you can do is, you can color each of the nodes with a separate color. So right now, your condition is satisfied. No two adjacent nodes have the same color. But if you notice, we are taking up so many different colors. You have to find out the minimum number of colors. So going by a brute force method, what you can do is, you can simply try to reduce some of these colors. As you can see, you are using the yellow color over here, right? And if you notice, node 6 is not connected in any way to node number 1. We are only talking about direct connections. So technically, what you can do is, you can color node 6 also with yellow. And then similarly, you can also connect node 4 with yellow, right? Similarly, you can look at other nodes also. You can color 7 with green and then you can color 5 with blue. So once again, just with three colors, you were able to arrive at a solution, right? You needed only three colors such that every adjacent node has the different color. So this is the problem statement. You have to find out the minimum number of colors required such that no two adjacent nodes have the same color. And this number is also known as the chromatic number of the graph. This was indeed a brute force way. Given a graph, you can just try out so many different combinations and then ultimately arrive at an answer, right? You can find out that, hey, these are the minimum number of colors required. But what happens when your graph starts to expand? What if you have 1000 nodes? You possibly cannot even begin to find out all the different combinations, right? So definitely we need some kind of an algorithm to start approaching it. There exists one greedy approach by which you can go about performing the graph coloring problem. So let us say once again, I have this graph in front of me, right? And over here, I have some sort of an array where I am just maintaining all the different number of colors that I have used, right? So you have to start somewhere, right? Let us say I am starting at node number one, correct? You have to fill it with some color, right? So what I'm going to do is, okay, let us say I am coloring this node with the color yellow. As soon as I take up one color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to store this color over here in my array. So this is telling me that I have used one of this color. Now to move ahead, let us look at our node number two. If I am at any node, then by the greedy approach, what you need to do is you need to find out any color that you can use starting from the first color. So if you check, can I use yellow in node number two? No, because yellow is directly connected to this particular node, right? If this becomes yellow, then both of these two nodes will have the same color, right? So yellow is not possible. I am out of colors right now. So what I'm going to do is 
I will take up another color over here in my array. That means I have two colors now. And what I'm going to do is I will color this node with the color green, right? This is how you move ahead. What is the third node? This is your node number three. And once again, you will try to apply the same technique. You check from your array. Hey, can I use the first color? In this case, node three is not connected to node one, right? So you can safely choose this color. So let us go ahead and color this node. This node is now done. Go to the next node. The next node is node number four. And again, apply the same technique. Can you use the first color yellow? Yes, you can because none of the adjacent nodes have the yellow color. So I'm going to take yellow and color four with it. Just keep moving ahead and all of it will make sense to you. Go on to the next node now. The next node is node number five and apply the same concept over here. Start with the first color. Can you use yellow over here? No, because four is connected to five and it is already yellow. So let us look at the second color now. Can I use a green? If this becomes green, then it is not connected to any other green. So I can safely use this over here. Move on to node number six now. And this is where things will get interesting and suddenly everything will make sense. I am at node number six. Apply the same technique again. Look in the colors that you have already used. Can you use a yellow? No, because it already has two neighbors which are sharing the color yellow. Can you use a green? No, once again, because it has two neighbors which are already sharing the color green. We are out of any more colors now. So that means it is time to pick up a new color. I add this new color over here and that is a blue. And I'm going to color my node blue. We are remaining with one more node. Go for node number seven now and apply the same technique. Look in your array. Can you use a yellow? No, because I'm already connected to yellow. Can you use a green? No, because I'm already connected to green. Can you use a blue? Yes, because it is not connected to any node which has the color blue. So I can take up this color and I can color it. So you see, by applying this greedy approach, I was able to arrive at a solution. And I can say that I needed just three colors to color my entire graph. Notice that if seven was connected directly to six, then you could not have used blue either. You would have to pick up any new color and then use it with seven. This greedy method is one way how you can approach this problem. The interesting part about this is that this is not optimal. You can call it near optimal. That means it will give you an almost optimal solution, but never a completely optimal solution. And that is because this problem is NP hard. A NP hard problem is one which cannot be solved in polynomial time. You might be wondering why this greedy approach does not work. Let me show you one example. Let us say I have this graph in front of me, right? And with a greedy approach, what will you do? You will start off with node number one. So I color node number one and okay, let us say I have used the yellow color. Now look at node number two. Once again, I will look at my used colors array. So I will try to use yellow. I can use it. So what I'm going to do is I will just color this node as yellow. Go ahead now. Look at node number three. Look in your array. Can you use yellow? No, right? Because it is already a neighbor. No worries. I will take up a new color and that is green and I'm going to color it green. So far, so good. Look at node number four now. And this is where things get interesting. Can you use the color yellow? No, right? Because it is already connected. Can you use the color green? No, because you already have a neighbor. So according to the greedy approach, what do you have to do? You will take up a new color and then color this node, right? So now it means that this graph needs at least three different colors. Similarly, you can go ahead and proceed. You will look at node number five. Once again, you cannot use yellow, you cannot use green. So what you will do, you will color it as blue. For node number six, you can use the color yellow. That is fine. 
so I will color this node. You may feel that wow, this solution gave you the correct answer. A greedy approach is telling me that I will need three minimum colors, right? But in fact, this solution is not optimal. Take a look at this solution now. It's the same graph, but I am able to achieve the graph coloring in just two different colors. And you may notice that none of the two adjacent vertices are of the same color. So this is a perfect example why the greedy approach does not give you an optimal solution. It gives you a near optimal solution. And sometimes in computer programming, that is also enough because this approach relies majorly on the fact that which node are you starting your algorithm from? If you're starting your algorithm from this point, then you may get a different answer. If you're starting your algorithm from this point, you may get a different answer. Because in a graph, it is not a linear structure. You can start at any node and then end at any node. That is why the discrepancy and that is why you cannot have an algorithm that works in a polynomial time. Our greedy approach works well enough and you must understand it. So let us just go ahead and do a dry run of the code. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement the graph coloring algorithm. And on the right, once again, I have a sample graph that is passed in as an input parameter to the function color graph. The first thing that we do is we create a color map and this map is eventually going to store that. Okay. What will be the final color of node one? What will be the final color of node two, node three and so on. You get the idea, right? And it will also help me to quickly refer back. Okay. What is the color of my neighbor? Because if you remember, what did we do? As soon as we reached a node, we looked at all of the neighbors, right? So this map will help us to quickly find out all of those colors. You now need to iterate over each of the vertex. So I run a for loop that is going to exactly do this. And then you start with vertex number one. What is the first thing that we do? We look at all the colors of my neighbors. So one has three neighbors and then I will create a set that will store all of these neighbors colors. The neighbors are five, two and three. Look at the colors five, two and three. All of them are empty. So you can just pick up any new color and allocate it to vertex number one, right? So currently I had actual colors, yellow, blue, red, but from a programming point of view, the colors can be just numbers, right? So first color could be number one, second color could be number two, third color could be number three and so on. So what I will simply do is I will allocate one color to number one. This loop will now run again and we are at vertex two. Look at its neighbors. Its neighbors are three, one and five. So three is empty, five is empty, but one is already allocated with a color. So in my neighbor set, I have one color over here, right? So in the next step, you now need to determine which color can you use? Can you use the color one? No, because it is already used. You don't have any more colors yet. So we will simply allocate a new color to node number two. Similarly, when this loop will run again, you will encounter node number three. It is connected to nodes one and two. So once again, you will allocate a new color to node number three. Moving ahead, you get node number four and this will clear everything. So you check out, okay, what are the colors of the neighbors? If you check the neighbors of four, they are three and seven. Seven hasn't been used yet, but three has been used. So in my neighbor set, I will have one color. The next step is deciding what color will the node four have. And to determine it, you will start going over all the colors that are available to you. Can you use the first available color? Yes, you can because the neighbors have not used it. So what I will simply do is I will use this color over here. I hope you are getting a good idea now. Similarly for node number five, look at its neighbors, one, two, and six, six is empty, but for one and two, you have used two colors, one and two. The next part is determining which color to pick. You cannot pick one because it has been used. You cannot pick two because it has been used, but is there another color available? Yes, three is available and your neighbors have not used it. 
So I'm going to use this color for node number five. So this is how your loop will continue to run. And eventually you will have all of the different colors in this map. The time complexity of this solution is order of V plus E, where V is the number of vertices and E are the number of edges. You need to iterate over every vertex and there is a possibility that you have to look at every edge of every vertex. So that is the worst case. The space complexity of this solution is order of V because you need that color map to store all of your results. I hope now you have a good idea about the graph coloring problem. As per my final thoughts, I just want to reiterate that the solution we just discussed, the greedy approach, it will only give you a near optimal solution. It can always be possible that you can find even less number of colors with some other methods. And as I said before, it is an NP hard problem. So P versus NP, this is an entirely different concept and it can take a lot of time just to understand it. I found a very good video where this concept is explained very, very nicely. So if you want to learn more about P versus NP, I would highly recommend you to check out this video. I really love it. Other than that, while going through the video, did you face any problems? Or do you have any other method in mind by which you can find a near optimal solution to this graph coloring problem? It will be really fantastic. Just let me know everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And you also get priority reply to your comments. I will now be coming up with more and more problems on the graph data structure. So until next time, see ya.